you're watching Nance Degree, where we're talking about the latest in trends, technologies, and innovations happening in the health and media spaces right now. I'm Amanda Prito. While we are talking about a hot topic, we're also talking about something with a little more serious tone today, and that's sustainability. As part of WPP, we do take a stance on social responsibility and the effect of the advertising industry on our planet. So here's a startling statistic I found before we dive in. 70 tons of CO2 equivalent emissions are activated by a single ad campaign. That is the same as what seven people on average release into the atmosphere a year. So let's dive in with Ole Kornfeld and Chris Dorfler to learn more about why we should all be thinking about this and what matters to our pharma clients. So for the most part, when we talk about um, carbon footprint in advertising, especially digital advertising, is the technology stack that we've built over the years that is delivering the campaigns from the advertiser all the way to the publisher. Uh, and uh, every time a call is made between all these technologies, it creates more of an opportunity for uh, these situations. And when we think about how do we now unpack that stack and simplify it while not sacrificing, obviously, our goals, this is where our opportunities lie to truly um, take these uh, elements seriously. Yeah, and one other thing I'll throw in there is uh, the impact that advertising and ad tech has on the global carbon footprint of, of your average person and then also the world. For digital technologies, now this is not just advertising, but the song Despacito in 2018, the streaming of that one song consumed more electricity than Chad Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, uh, Somalia, and the Central African Republic combined. It really shows that uh, the advertising industry needs to get a handle on its own carbon footprint if the world is going to hit its net zero goals. That is uh, the main reason for the situation we're in. It's also, I believe, one of the easiest things to solve because uh, historically speaking, um, we've, as an industry, uh, overbuilt our tax tax and that only uh, created this problem. But if we really uh, look back and see what is truly critical and necessary for us to deliver these campaigns, a big chunk of these technologies are just not needed in that in that daisy chain of, of uh, demand and supply. So being more strategic and more kind of thoughtful about it out of the gate will allow us to build a more responsible tax tax uh, on behalf of our clients. So of course, technology and AI and the efficiencies and many, many positives that we expect to come from it are something we get really excited about. But we've also been very thoughtful and conscientious about you know, technology and AI. And I think that touches on sustainability. So Oleg, how do you see sustainability playing a role as we look forward to all of these nuances from AI? It's a very interesting situation we're in as an industry. I believe if AI would not have exploded as, as it did in the last 10 to 12 months in our industry, sustainability would probably be the number one topic we'll be talking about today. Uh, just thinking about how all the elements been coming together over the last few years uh, with, um, with media campaign optimizations, with uh, direct path optimizations from buyers to sellers, all of that was driving us to this sustainability idea, but because AI kind of sucked all the air out of the conversation, um, I feel like that took a bit of a backseat to sustainability. I mean, took a little bit of a backseat to AI in our everyday conversations, but in no way it should prevent us from doing what we need to do as responsible marketers uh, to continue evaluating our technologies and seeing where actually AI can become helpful in this level of optimization like most applications of AI, has a wide breadth of things it can do, right? It has the opportunity to allow us to be more precise and efficient with how we're serving our media, uh, how we're building our algorithms, so that we can actually understand what the real carbon footprint of our, of our advertising campaigns are, make optimizations in real time. But it also has the, has the downside, right, where the, all these Technologies require data servers, require their own algorithms. If everything's not built in an efficient way, then it's just going to be adding more electricity cost on top of things, which will ultimately increase the carbon footprint of advertising. So there's definitely a lot of value to where AI can help us be more efficient and effective with uh, these efforts in sustainability. But we should not forget that to run AI at scale does require a lot of energy, a lot of power. And that is also not only costly, 
but that affects our calculus in the way we calculate um, the sustainability number. Oli, can you give us a look at how we are uh, aiming to achieve this and what we're doing across the media process from you know strategy to KPIs and, and what that looks like in terms of sustainability? Sure. Actually, as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of elements that we've been putting into practice around simplification of the tech stack coincides very nicely with this effort as well. And um, the concept of supply path optimization, SPO, is a three-letter acronym that's been probably thrown around a lot in the marketplace over the last couple of years, is, to me, one of the biggest uh, opportunities for us to truly build a process around that simplified stack for that um, uh, from strategy all the way to activation because if you cut away elements of the unnecessary tech from the uh, from the uh, buy side to the sell side that creates that simple a simpler path to the publisher and by eliminating those uh, those uh, unnecessary steps along the way we are uh, helping uh, with our sustainability goals. So Chris why don't you deep dive a little further into what our partnerships aspect looks like here. It does a uh, term called made for advertising sites, right? And these are, everyone has experienced these. You go to a page and there's 20 ads on the page. And every time you click through something, there's another 20 ads. And really, it almost feels like the purpose of that page is just to bombard you with ads. So if we do some things like cut those sites out, right, we can reduce our carbon footprint. But those, the so sites versus a site that has, you know, just a handful of ads or a couple has 11 times lower carbon footprint, right? Which is pretty dramatic in terms of an actual difference there. Um, so there's things like that where we can optimize our campaigns and work with our partners to understand what those sites are um, to improve both the carbon footprint, but also the media effectiveness. And then when it comes to the more direct suppliers, how do we work with the people who are doing this right, who we want to reward for doing it right to be get down to net zero? And so we have, from our standpoint, right, we're the largest healthcare ever, uh, agency in, in the world. Um, and so we have a very strong relationship with healthcare media suppliers. And so their emissions are our emissions, and then therefore our emissions are our clients' emissions. And so we all need to work together to to reduce this down. So we are working hand in hand to do that um, in almost a a one to one level. So there's a lot of different things that we can do, um, and it really requires a strong partnerships and rewarding those who are starting to do it better. And to some degree, cutting those out who are really the, the, the bad actors. here. So just to add to Chris's point about how do we reward uh, the partners on our, uh, that we work, choose to work with, even the programmatic uh, landscape where there's just so much supply, I believe as agencies, we need to give those supply aggregators a certain set of rules and benchmarks that we would like them to follow in order for us to select their channels of media for us to activate. So we've created this concept of green private marketplaces specifically for that, where we would define specific sets of expectations we have from these suppliers. So if they want to participate in these green private marketplaces, they would need to confirm to us and validate to us that they do follow the really strict rules that we would like to put in place. That's incredible. What is a way that we can all get started? So in the vein of partnerships, what are some questions that publishers, partners, clients should be thinking about and asking each other? We need to establish benchmarks, right? We need to establish best practices so that our publishers know what they need to do as part of the RFIs and working with us as part of the business. What I think about it is there's like kind of the qualitative side and there's the quantitative side, right? There's agencies out there like Ecobotis who um, rate organizations uh, in terms of them achieving their own net zero goals. But we will be evaluating oftentimes through those ratings, just like our clients evaluate us through those ratings um, and, and WPP as a whole. And uh, so there's a large aspect of we down the road are expecting our uh, our partners to be leaning into those organizations to get third party verified that they are actually on track with what they need to be achieving because us and uh, we really don't actually want to be the arbiters in that standpoint, both from a, an expertise standpoint is really a, a very significant lift, but also it's best if we're not grading our own homework. We are expecting our partners to be able to provide that data to us so that we can then evaluate and compare 
um, of course, being third party verified. We need our partners to be leaning into what that data is and making it digestible. We can build our own reports so that we can send to our clients. Here's what your actual carbon footprint is, right? Because we're really in the transparency stage right now. The optimization stage, which we're starting to do little bits, but is going to be down the road. I would just add that in any initiative like this across the industry, there needs to be some kind of a, a common currency that we all agree to use to measure ourselves. And that uh, common cur cur currency will allow us not to just, as Chris said, um, uh, grade our own homework, but kind of apply the, the same method uh, across um, every touch point uh, across the planning and buying process. Uh, I would also add that our clients have their own goals that we need to be very mindful of. And we need to work with them to make sure that currency is applicable ac across from the client all the way through the uh, the supplier side. So in the near future, Oleg and Chris, what's next? What should clients expect and what should partners be prepared to do? So I would say the low hanging fruit is definitely the programmatic ecosystem. That's where a lot of these issues start and end. So as I mentioned before, bringing in that common currency across that planning and buying process of a programmatic activation, I would say is the first place to start. Yeah, and um, what I'll say, you kind of focusing on the clients here a little bit. Um, our clients, as Oleg mentioned, all have their own net zero goals. And I'll say fortunately in this, in this category, a lot of our clients all have 20, 30 net zero goals. So that gives us the permission to lean into this and say, hey, our clients want this and therefore we need to create these strategies um, and work with our partners to do it. Traditionally, the way the world has worked is their sustainability experts are really the ones managing the entire supply chain. So the reports that the media team can provide back to the sustainability team is actually in line with how they are used to working, in line with providing the data in a way that is both is is effective and and easily to easy to understand comprehensible right so that they can action off of it and pass it back and can actually understand what the real footprint is of their media part of their business which in some cases is their fourth or fifth largest source of carbon emissions right so this is not a small percentage by any stretch and it's something they really need to understand and for us, our media campaigns are 60 plus percent of our carbon emissions, right? So we really need to get a handle on this if we're going to hit our 2030 net zero goals. It's so incredibly interesting to me, this topic. I, I think, especially being in the facet of the advertising industry that we are in, which is, you know, health and wellness, of course, we're now trying to be conscientious about how we bring well-being, wellness to our audiences and in a totally different way. So like what we're doing in our day-to-day -day jobs it all has this greater good, I, I feel overarching it. And yet what we're doing is also impacting the planet, human lives in, in a different way. So I think it's just so important to do better in the future. Thank you, Oleg and Chris, for joining us today and helping us define and understand the energy load behind AI and a lot of the work that we're doing and for helping us learn how to achieve better results and more efficiencies. Thanks for watching the nth degree. Remember to like and subscribe.